How's it going everybody? It's Mike, this old hot rod. I'm in the garage, it's two Wednesday afternoon. And the competition is well underway. I've since sold my first item. I'm working on my, well, Allie, th this is not good. This is not good for our relationship. I don't know why I agreed to this. This is a stressful situation and I do not recommend doing this to anybody if you're in a relationship with someone. The reason I was working on the radiator and the grill shell was in order for me to remove it, put it back on, remove it, I needed to get that done so I can remove the motor and the transmission so I can work on the floor. So moving on to the floor, this floor pan came from a 32 pickup. It came from a buddy of mine, Tim, down in Rhode Island. And he gave this to me. I had a 34 Ford pickup cab that I had picked up and flipped a couple years ago. Didn't end up using it because the truck had a complete floor in it. It was a finished interior done truck. So I hung on to this. Figured I'd use it for something at some point throughout, you know, who knows when. I grabbed it, brought it up into here, put it on the 34 frame rails, and the thing just fits perfectly. So what I'm going to do is i got to bend these where it's bent over. I'm gonna bend these back out, flatten this back out. I'm gonna leave this one notched, lip down, this lip down, but I just need to notch it here. I may end up having a little strip of, of metal here in front of the seat, but for now, I'm gonna use this panel uh, so I can get this set up and then I can start working on my tow board. My, my pedal assembly, I believe, is going to be up underneath it'll be under here and then the only thing they're going to be sticking through with the two arms the one arm coming up for the clutch and one arm coming up for the brake pedal and those should just be able to push in and out and not interfere with with the floorboard itself so that being said i'm going to get this situated where it needs to be get some holes drilled get some self tappers in it on both sides and then like i said flatten out the edge the lip that i need to flatten out so I can get my tow board situated and get it in place so I know I can start moving forward with, with other items. I got my earbuds in, try to save my hearing. I'm gonna put some music on so I can get this pounded flat and not go deaf. All right, let's see. side close I'm gonna do this side I'm gonna leave the back itself flattened down and then I'm gonna take it outside to the English wheel and see if I can just get that little bit of a lip smoothed out a little better and not wrinkle the panel I promise it will get
the Blomberg Coopster. I had the hood tucked in, but I pulled it out the other day because someone came over looking at it. There's the fenders, there's the deck lid, the seats, the doors, and the entire cow. You gotta get out in the garage and do something every single day. It's so easy to not go out in the garage, especially when it's cold and snowing, but you just gotta do it. If you have the ability and you have your health, you just gotta try to get out to the garage and get some things done. And if you don't have your health, Maybe ask someone to help you, you know? There's plenty of people in the world that love these cars that just maybe don't have one of their own. And they would love the opportunity to work on one and maybe learn something and work with, with you guys or somebody you know that owns a car but maybe doesn't have the physical ability at the moment to work on it. So, yeah, man, you guys just gotta get out there and get your cars worked on. And, even if it's going out, organizing the garage and cleaning the shop, and sometimes that's all it takes to get the blood flowing, you know? Let's go set this in the car. up forgetting to do was notch in this back corner on both sides so I gotta notch those out and so it'll set down set down on the frame rails three quarters of an inch off the back of the bell house and I'm gonna throw some self tappers in here Thank <laughs> you. 
Damn it. How many of these fucking things am I gonna lose? That was painful. Well, this is the first piece of the floor structure that I'm cutting here. This, this piece of one inch box tube here will go across the back side of the panel, just underneath, just behind this lip. So when this panel sets in, this lip is gonna go right over the edge of that piece of square stock. I'll probably put another piece of bar stock here and I'll be able to build my next floor pan off of the front of this. I am going to end up having to cut them at some point and box them forwards because this is where my shifter is going to go. But I at least need to start to build some type of a structure. This is just about done now. I'm going to get this fitted in there, get it tacked on and then start making some measurements to build the floor structure. Such a great tool. So, if my measurements are correct, this should fit just underneath. I don't know if it's gonna clear the shifter mount. It might, I don't think it is. Yeah. I think I'm gonna have to pull that shifter mount off of there. Oh, well, like I said, I'm gonna end up having to cut this, so maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just notch it. This is gonna be removed probably somewhere in this vicinity. And then the, the tubing's gonna go over this way to clear the shifter linkage and then forwards and then across. And then my pedal assembly is actually gonna be beneath this structure. This structure is gonna be right at the top of the frame rail, like that. So you gotta start somewhere, right? And this is where I'm starting. So I'm just gonna notch the bottom of this out so I can get it put in there and tacked in place. All right, so I just, like I said, I just notched it. The reason I don't want to cut it in half is I want to make sure that it's this thing is absolutely dead level all the way across. Because I don't want to risk it not being level. I mean, I could be able, I'd be able to fix it in the future, but I figured I might as well just keep it intact just to uh, to minimize the chance of it getting out of level. All right, so I'm good here. I'm just going to get a few tacks underneath the edges. I'm going to head clamp it to the sheet metal and then get it tacked on the frame. All right, so now I know this is straight across. The metal's clamped to it. It's where it needs to be. That's nice. That's good. I like that. I got to figure out where the seat's going. All right, so I cut my second piece. I bent up a small piece of metal. Same gauge as the front piece, the front panel. What I'm going to do is get this tacked on the frame rail. How I'm going to do that is using that piece of metal as a spacer. I'm going to get it right at the same surface. fit in there nice and tight and the next floor panel goes in I'm gonna cut and re-weld that passenger side I'm sorry the driver's side all right so sorry I forgot to spin the camera around working on this side I just cut that tack off and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I, I'm gonna grab a bigger clamp uh, I don't know if I should clamp it or not what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just pinch this enough oh it's hitting that weld I don't want there to be a big gap in the in the the floor so I'm trying to get it real tight so I can just maybe run a little bit of seam sealer or something but it's hitting hitting that spot weld 
So, gonna, well, I didn't want to break the weld on the other side, but I just did. So this tab, you can see, kind of hangs over the edge. And that's going to make sure that I have the support or the floor support on the same plane as the it's still a space the hell is it hitting this is what I was going to do a few minutes ago My gay. No, why don't you just be my gay friend? What? Why don't you just be it? That's that no, you can't. That's not right. That doesn't make any sense. Wait, 20 minutes. Alright, All right, so as long as I play my cards right, I should be able to get these panels tucked in, run a bead of seam sealer down. I want to make these panels removable so I have access in the future. So that's why I'm doubling up right here. So I'll have my, my floorboard for the feet. I'll have my toe board to the firewall. And then I'll have this panel here. That'll be, it's probably gonna go about, I'm thinking about eight inches. And then I think my seat bottoms are gonna be here, from here back. I have a few seats that I can use to measure the seat bottoms and I'm going to go get an average an average measurement from the front to the back edge of the seat bottom and then I'm going to be able to kind of figure out where I need to sit in relation to the pedals. So that's my next step is to figure this out but it's dinner time so I need to go in the house get cleaned up go pick up dinner for my alley. How's it going everybody it's Mike with this old hot rod I'm up here in Middleborough Mass I'm in the garage today kind of a snowy snowy crappy day out there today so i uh, didn't have any work going on which was nice and uh, it was nice to be able to stay home on a snowy day so uh last night i left off working on the floor inside the car uh so today i'm gonna continue working on the floor and see if i can get my seat position so I can get the placement of the seat where exactly exactly where it needs to be and then I can continue the framework of the floor so let's see where I left off so this here is where I left off remember I was fitting this cross piece in on the floor and what I'll do moving forwards is I'll make sure that I have a spacer in between this section here and then over on the passenger side because what's end up going to happen is I'm going to have to cut the other piece of metal that the one by stock that's under here probably going to have to cut it right around where this screw is and the next piece is going to come down and meet it here I need room for my shifter and my shift linkage and I think this piece right here that's above the shifter where I notched it is going to have to be removed so then what I'll do at that point is I'll make sure I have my steel in place. I'll have a spacer in here also. And then I'll tack weld these two box tubes underneath. So then this portion here isn't just standing alone by itself. It'll actually be welded to the structure that's going across tying the frame rails in. And then I'll be able to build my box going forwards. Obviously not to uh, impede the pedals. So I'm happy so far with what... Uh, the, with what I've got done, I have uh, about a three quarters of an inch space in between the floorboard and the back of the bell housing, which is which is good. Gives me a little bit of wiggle room. And uh, at this point now, like I just said, I can do two one one of two things moving forwards. At this point, I can put another cross brace here and then figure out where the angle needs to be for my seat, or I can kind of start working on my toe board and then figure out where my pedals are going to go so i think i might actually just start working on my toe board uh, and then i can kind of start to 
figure out exactly where my pedal assembly is going to need to be. And then, well, you know what? Let's do this. Let's, let's work on this because I think this is going to be a little, little easier. Um, I can throw the steering wheel on so I know where the steering wheel is in relation to the seat. And then I can kind of get the seat in place, figure out exactly where it's going to come down to so I can figure out where exactly I'm going to need to build my tunnel. And then I can build the, the two, the, the individual, the wells or whatever you want to call them, where the seat bottoms are going to go. So I'm going to get to work on that now. Um, I'm going to go out to the garage and grab the other seat that I picked up the other day. Uh, with the coupe, with the uh, the Blumber coupe. All right, so you can see I've grabbed the bottom seat cushion from this other seat that I grabbed from Bob's son, and it fits perfectly inside the frame rails, which, to be honest, is just incredible. I have the seat back, but at the moment I have no way to attach the seat back, so. I'm going to try to see if I can kind of sit in here, grab the steering wheel. Probably right in your way, but... Oh, I'm sinking! <laughs> I got to figure out how I'm going to hold this up. I think just sitting in that right now, it felt too low. I'm dropping everything. Uh, as you can see, I'm sitting in the car. Um, the seat's too close. So what I did was I grabbed a piece of wood from up behind the house. I screwed it into the wood that's underneath the quarter glass of the quarter windows. And I threw a couple of body clamps on the bottom of the seat so the seat wouldn't kick out. But the seat's a little too close. I'm gonna climb back in here and get this piece of wood moved back a couple inches. I'll do it a little out of time. I didn't really know how else to go about this because I have no structure in the seat itself. It's just a top and bottom cushion. I may be able to leave the seat bottom right there. The seat back is still a little vertical. A little more vertical than I would prefer. It's still gonna go back. I think about a pretty good height. I have really short legs. So it kind of, these smaller hot rods kind of played in my favor because of my short legs, but I definitely have to go back at least another couple inches in the seat bottom as well. So what I'll probably end up doing is adding another frame um, cross member to go from the frame rails. I'm just, I have this thing wedged in here sitting on a couple of trailer fenders. They happen to be just the right height. I don't know what that seat bottom, uh, seat came out of, but whatever it is, it's, it's exactly the right size. Again, what I think I need to do is I'm going to move that wood piece back again another couple inches. I'll move these clamps a couple inches back. Again, I'm just trying to get a, a little bit of a rough idea. And then that will allow me to figure out where the slope is going to start for the seat pan. And where it starts, I'll put another one of these tubes going across. I'll get my seat in position, get some measurements made, figure out where things are going to be, and then I'll add, I'll start adding my uh, cross braces across the frame rails. Yeah. All right, so let's go back, try to line it up with these holes in the frame. I don't know what they're from, but the car appears to have them on either on both sides. So I'll use those to my advantage. Assuming they're 
in the same spot. All right, so I moved that back another two inches or so. I think the seat back is still going to be a little steep, but I can adjust that in the future. What I'm really looking to accomplish is to get the seat bottom in place where it needs to be. And then get the seat bottom in place so I can get the distance for my legs. Yeah, that's, that's a lot better. That's much better. I mean, even the seat back like that's really not that bad. I raised up. I raised up the bottom cushion, the thick, that same thickness of this wood height wise. I jammed it down in between the frame rails and put it on top of the trailer fenders that are down there. Gas pedal. I think I'm getting close. I think that's as far as the seat bottom goes. I think I'm pretty good. You can see here where I'm at with my, with my feet. Got plenty of room down here. I want, that's why I wanted the floor pan flat in the front. So my feet weren't trapped because if you trap your feet in between the frame rail and the transmission hump the bell housing or the tunnel that it's it's just doesn't end up being very comfortable but i can stretch my legs out and i think i'll be just about in front of the pedals uh, steering wheels in really good position i'm happy with that height wise i'm good I do. I will have to fill in this. I don't know why this got cut. I think it maybe got cut because of the. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I mean height-wise, the seat bottom. I think I'm. I think I'm pretty good. I got room. I can't. I can. I can't really touch. I can just barely touch the firewall with the front of my toe, if I stretch my legs out. Uh, so driving, having my legs a little bit bent, this will be. Probably more comfortable than my 30 coupe. It'll be certainly a lot more room than the other car. And like I said, I mean, height wise, distance wise, I'll be looking, I'll be looking right here, kind of right out. My head will be right about at the B pillar, a little bit back. Pretty good position. I'll be able to see out the quarter glass. I'll obviously have to lean forward a little bit and see out the driver's door. Uh, height wise, the camera right now is right in front of my face. So this is my view. My, I don't have the windshield frame in, so I'll, I'll lose a tiny bit of vision having that in, but not very much. It won't be affected down below because it's behind the dash, the actual dash itself. As far as the seat bottom goes, that's pretty much where I need to be. So I think now what I need to do is get my measurements, figure out where they gotta be, and then I'll start building the framework for the seat. I don't plan on using this seat at this moment. I have already purchased all the product that I'm gonna need to build a custom seat for the car. However, if this works out, I'll at least use this for mock-up and maybe you know, get it to fit. And then I can always work on the seat, the final seat for the car when that time comes. And I'll be able to install that at a later date, but I'll at least have this in the car so I can keep you know, moving forwards. And basically, if I can build the new seat to closely mimic this, then the new seat should fit just fine. I'm gonna make a few little adjustments, make some measurements, make some marks on the frame, and I'm gonna start laying out my floor. All right, guys, so where I'm at is, kind of figured out where the seat needs to be. I cut down this cross brace. I got magnets on either side, holding it in place right at the line where I need it to be. I'm gonna, Throw some tacks on it and get it so it's set in place. And then I'm gonna put the seat back in and get a measurement on the angle the seat bottom needs to be. And then I'll get a bottom piece put in place and then figure out what the middle's gonna look like. Oh, I leaned on it, wasn't welded yet. All right, let me get some tacks on this and I'll explain after in a minute. So I got that one in place. So now what I need to do is I need to mount this lower support. So this is the height that I had the seat bottom at. It's kind of just roughly sitting in there. I need to put another cross brace down here. 
So I'm gonna just make a couple marks here roughly. It's pretty much right at the B pillar. So there's a bolt hole. It's the center of the B pillar. Center of the B pillar. Roughly, I need to be like about two and a half, two and a quarter inches. So I'll make it two inches up from the bottom will be the top of my cross brace so two inches up from the bottom so 38 and 3 8 3 quarters so we'll go with that measurement 38 and 3 quarters let's see if we can creep up creep up on the uh I should have measured it at 39 inches and crept up on it a little more. There's just a little bit of a gap. Let me see here. Sixteenth of an inch or so on either side. So I think I can get away with it. So an inch and a quarter off the bottom edge of the frame rail is where it's finished, where it's going to end up landing. I'm going to get some measurements front to back so I know it's in the right spot. All right, that's an inch and a quarter. Wait a minute, that box and plate's hanging down on this side. Yeah, and it's flush with that side. So it's gonna need to be higher. Level, level. So I'm gonna measure from the top of the frame down because, so it's gonna be two inches from the bottom of the frame rail. And the frame is exactly six inches. So I need to mark it at four. Be four inches from the top of the frame. All right, so I need to get it so it's four inches from the top of the of the frame rail. That's that's the number I'm looking for. And I want to center it on the hole that is there's a hole right here at the B pillar, right in the center of the B pillar. So I want to measure this, uh, I'm sorry, install this or weld this centered on that hole. And that's, that's right where I'm at. So I'm just going to throw a couple tacks on this side and then I'll do the passenger side. All right, so tack on that side and I'll get this side tacked and then we'll pop that seat bottom back in. All right, so that one's right on the money. It's right at four inches. Depending on what the diameter of the drive shaft is going to be, well, yeah, I think I am going to need one because the rear axle is the, the pinions actually, if not level, it might even be a little higher than the drive than the uh, yoke on the transmission. So I'm going to hold off from that for doing that at the moment. You can see there's a measurement or there's a mark. There's a mark on the frame that I made right here. That was the angle roughly of the back of the seat. I wanted it to go back a little bit further, so I kind of needed it to be like, whoa, that's hot. Kind of needed it to be in this angle here, roughly. This is actually going to be a little bit steeper than I had originally planned because I'm kind of building it to the seat that I have right now. Worst case scenario, if I have to move this forwards a little bit, I'll be able to do that. So. Thank everybody for reaching out. I've had a lot of emails the past few days, just people saying hello and uh, just giving me lots of info, which is amazing. You know, just they just just giving me info, just knowledge, you know, things to look for when I'm out buying and selling and picking or doing whatever. And uh, yeah, just knowledge. It's it's certainly appreciated because. You guys know, I mean, I haven't been doing this a long time. I've been doing this five years. And in the first year, 
I bought my sedan a week before my 40th birthday and that car sat in my backyard covered up with tarps and stuff for a year over a year so uh, I didn't start working on it because I, I had a lot of work to do in my garage I had to like had to redo my garage and uh, truth be told I was very very overwhelmed with the thought of building a hot rod I never planned on building a hot rod I always thought I'd buy one but when I started looking as I was getting near my 40th birthday I realized I couldn't afford to buy one done so I needed to buy one that was in pieces and, and build it and at that time I didn't even know how to weld I mean, when you people comment and say things it's most times I appreciate the info because I'm not as knowledgeable as 90% of the guys out there. You know, people say to me, oh, well, I'm, I'm not as talented or as knowledgeable as you. I'm, I'm far from talented and, and, and knowledgeable enough to, to know some of the things that I need and, and want. But there's so many things that I just don't know. Uh, I watch Matt's, Matt's videos, uh, you know, uh, Iron Trap, and he's so knowledgeable. And... It baffles my mind when he when he talks about like the different flatheads and you know all these different just the different things you know talking about the different transmissions and I I kind of know some stuff but I I don't know I know nothing compared to Matt and a lot of these guys and people that are in this hobby and been doing this for years and years so again I've been into this now for been working on my my other cars it's been four years total. A little over four years, almost five years, and it's, uh, I've come a long way, I know, but I still, I think I've come further along with the cars that I own than the knowledge I have obtained, uh, even though I have obtained a lot, so, and I'm just really fortunate to own this, this car in particular, because again, this is just a dream of mine, is to own a 33 five window, especially 33, 34 five window, especially being an old Massachusetts hot rod, so. Uh, I'm gonna work in the back of the car, but for now, I don't know if it's gonna be part of this video. So I wanted to say thank you, everybody. I appreciate all the support, and I appreciate people's comments and the messages and, and uh, people who have been on uh, on my website purchasing things and uh, sticker packs and you know one sticker a couple stickers sticker packs and and uh, also you know sweatshirt a t i'm sorry t-shirts and uh, i now have that flathead ford poster on my website i have i think a dozen of them in stock anyways thank you everybody i appreciate it and i hope you guys are enjoying yourselves and uh, thank you for following along see everybody take care bye bye i like it Woo! making progress Building hot rods!